here we have Swampsy's loop build for the Babok challenge using textiles, skyscraper, marbles, bootstraps, loop, and gavel. Long-term member of the community knows I love the gavel probably, so pulling on the heartstrings there, that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a cheaty one, uh, but we're going to go ahead and look at this build. Take a look at all of the items because we're not super sure what every item does just by name at the moment. So I'm going to dig into what each of the items do, what they bring to the build, and then sort of toss it up, have a think about how it's going to work as it is, how it scales, and then give it its babok rating. So the item that we are building around is the loop every seven seconds. Give items to the left, plus three shielding, and give items to your right, 6% extra charge speed. That's a really interesting item. I really do love these positional based items. You know, do you place loop further to the left and give it lots and lots of uh, charge speed? Or do you put your loop further to the right and focus more on its shielding? And I think either of these would be perfectly adequate builds. But in this case, we've chosen shielding. Because I can see in his uh, positioning of the loop that there is only one item to its right and many items to its left. So let's start off uh, looking through some of those extra shielding items and see how they fit with the loop. See if they really benefit from this plus three uh, and how they bring the build together. All right, starting off strong. Hopefully, let's take a look at textiles. Every five seconds, gain five shield. We love one shield per second. That gets upgraded as well, looking good. It's passive. Whenever you use a weapon, give all your shielding items plus two shield for this fight. Okay, so we're seeing a, a bit of a syn bit of a bit of synergy here. Um, it's going to be a, a bit of a half and half build as well. You, at least you hope. Five, five shielding, five seconds, by the way. Really, really solid for a medium item. But we want to make use of this passive, which means we want weapons that trigger regularly. Fortunately, we do have the option of making things charge faster to the right of loop. So, six and weapons there. We'll begin with plus two shielding over and over and over. Really nice bit of synergy. I like it so far. Let's see what else he brings. Skyscraper is the uh, next one. Skyscraper, every eight seconds, deal damage equal to your shield. Uh, whenever you use another item, gain 15 shield is the passive, uh, and it is a large weapon property. So here you go. Here's one of our weapons firing every eight seconds. For every eight seconds, that triggers giving everything plus two shielding. And loop triggers every seven seconds, giving everything to its left plus three shielding which includes Skyscraper. And whenever you use other items, you're also gaining 15 shield. So, for example, when we use textiles, even straight off the bat, the first time we use textiles and we gain 5 shield, Skyscraper gives us another 15 shield. This build is strong from the very beginning based purely off of Skyscraper's passive. Skyscraper's passive creates this sort of this sort of uh, floor where if you cannot beat, let's say, 20 damage, you are going to struggle to even eclipse the lowest amount of shielding this build can do. And it's built for scaling as well. We'll see just how much scaling. It has some. Skyscraper cannot carry that plus two by itself. If there's another weapon in here, which I think Gavel is, then we should be okay. Maybe it's a long cooldown. We'll get into that. Do I like this to the right or left of loop? That is the other question, though. If I really want to make use of Techstars' as passive, I'd put Skyscraper to the right of loop, so we're getting that plus two regularly. But equally, Skyscraper is quite a low cooldown item. Eight seconds is pretty... Uh, I'd say it's pretty average rather than low. So that if we are bust buffing it up with plus three shields, that is triggering quite often... I think you are fortunately flexible in this position. And this is something I'm going to say about this build in general. Thanks to textiles, you are flexible. You can pivot, and that is exceptionally important in the bazaar. Because if you see some good weapons and get some good weapon options going, you can just snatch those up, put them to the right of loop. You can just have loop at the far left of your build with textiles just past it, and then a butt ton of weapons. And you're getting lots of shielding off of that because the weapons are triggering lots and lots and lots, which means textiles triggers harder, 
which means, uh, and, and textiles is also getting that boost from loop, uh, but loop is helping all of your weapons trigger much more quickly. So you could pivot into a weapon build and eventually sell the textiles and loop if you wanted to, or you can keep going with a shielding build and slowly sell off your weapons and maybe swap textiles out for something else if you find a better option. But it is a pretty good item as it stands. Because one thing I really like about that build, this build so far is it's flexible. Um, and uh, and Skyscraper... Well, so Skyscraper certainly creates that sort of left floor where it uh, makes you pretty impenetrable if they can't deal enough damage. This this will punish some weaker builds for sure. Uh, next up we have Marbles, which every 9 seconds gives you 1 shield, and when you use an item, give this plus 1 shield for the fight. So Marbles is going to be looking for more fast firing things to give it more shield. This will start combat. So far, we will have a trigger of loop, a trigger of skyscraper, and a trigger of textiles, which it will get plus one from, uh, so you get plus three from loop, so it'll be four shielding, plus another one from loop because of its passive, so five shielding. Then, what triggers next? Oh, skyscraper, or no, textiles will trigger first. But textiles will also give it plus one, uh, which makes it, I've lost count. Oh no. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. As we go through this build, your textiles trigger, giving marbles plus one shielding. Then your loop triggers, giving it plus three from its own passive and plus one from this. So that's two plus four for six. I can do maths. <laughs> then your skyscraper triggers. That's another plus one. And then because that is triggered, that triggers your textiles, which is plus three. So it's nine shielding at nine seconds when marbles triggers. That's one for one. What? Sorry, one shielding for one second at a small item size. That's already really, really good. And then this just scales. Like the, the quicker things fire, the longer the fight goes. Marbles is your shielding item that will skyrocket. And it's almost a core piece of this build. I would argue that you could sell Skyscraper before you could sell Marbles in this build. If you're sort of pivoting into something else but still want to remain strong. Because for what it is, if you swap say you swap skyscraper out with a small weapon like a yo-yo right you're almost getting or you're definitely getting more shielding on marbles for that you're losing that sort of safety level that boundary of 20 shielding that skyscraper and, and textiles just bulk on but you're getting more scalability realistically from a smaller item because it's only taking up a smaller slot so while marbles might not seem like the most important item of this build, I kind of think it's almost built around marbles. Uh, you'd have to tell me that, Swansea, but... It's, it's, this build is very adept at boosting marbles through the roof. Uh, bootstraps is the next one. Uh, I kind of know what this one does. This one gives you armor, right? Uh, bootstraps. When you buy this, gain 20 armor, your shielding items give for 8 extra shielding. Well, we just did a load of maths for no reason. Well, not no reason. When Marbles first fires, it now does 17 shielding for 9 seconds. Because Bootstraps is plus is 8. This is a really interesting take on the shielding build. Where, like, I'm going to have a minimum amount of shielding. You're always going to have that minimum bulk of shielding. So now when... Skyscraper's passive triggers when marbles, oh, sorry, not marbles, when textiles triggers, you'll gain 28 shielding, which is nuts. And then everything else, this is just, it's an insane base level of shielding. And it still has that scalability through marbles. It doesn't quite scale exponentially, it doesn't absolutely pop off. But you have this base level of shielding that is going to be so hard to overcome unless they've got something that hits hard which means you're going to be getting use out of that skyscraper active ability where it hits hard and it does damage based on your shielding you're going to get that damage now that damage is going to be like 30 probably 
because you don't have that regular pulsing, like really high amount of shielding. Uh, sorry, really sort of quick firing scaling shielding. You do have some amount of scaling shielding, but it's mostly just this base level. But I'm actually quite impressed by because there's so many different things applying it now. I take back what I said a second ago. I think you can chuck marbles out. Well, I guess it just depends. It's another it's another option for, for scaling or pivoting the build, right? You can throw marbles out if you need to for whatever reason. And you can always be consistent with having that low level of shielding. It's going to keep you safe while you try and figure out what your other thing is doing. Or you can keep marbles in and swap to a scaling build. You can sell your bootstraps... Keep the 20 armor, because it says when you buy this game 20 armor, I don't I think you can sell it and keep the 20 armor. You can just sell the bootstraps, grab something else, keep the 20 armor, and if you don't need if you're looking for more scalability as you get later on in the game, you can you can look for that and ditch the eight extra shielding. That's a really interesting addition to the build. Okay, okay, we've taken ages on this one. Gavel. Gavel, every 10 seconds, deal three damage. When you gain shield, deal this this gains three damage for the fight. I, uh... Okay, I don't know how this would work. But if we put this to the left of Loop, if Loop gave this three shielding, I feel like the damage triggers, then the shielding triggers. But if it happened to be the other way around, this would buff itself as it hit, which would be interesting. But I think it's the right decision to put it to the right-hand side of loop because it is a 10-second cooldown. That's one of the longer cooldowns we've seen uh, in this build, or it is the longest cooldown in this build, and one of Pygmalion's longer cooldowns. So definitely a smart idea. Uh, when you gain shield, give this three damage for the fight. I would be interested to know whether or not Bootstraps and Skyscraper's passives counted as a different instance of shielding or if they just buff the shielding that's already happened. If those are two separate instances, this gavel will absolutely obliterate someone. For the purposes of this, let's pretend that gavel doesn't obliterate people. Let's say that skyscraper and I've lost it, bootstraps that was the other item. Skyscraper and Bootstraps buff the shielding that's already happening. It doesn't count as the same thing. Gavel's still going to hit decently well. Every time Gavel triggers, shields would have triggered from, what, four other items? Uh, maybe just three other items. So, it'll be buffed by nine damage. It'll be doing 12 damage the first time it triggers. And then 21 the second time. That's buffed, of course, or helped, of course, by uh, Skyscraper's damage. So it's not the only damage coming in. Skyscraper also dealing about that level of damage. So for a medium weapon, Gavel's really sort of pulling its weight at that point, considering we're comparing this to a large weapon. But it's not the be-all and end-all of this build. The be-all and end-all of this build is just how obscenely tanky it is without having to really do much. The fact that uh, Skyscraper and Bootstraps combined just flat add 23 shielding to basically everything you do is insane. And I would hate to run up against this build even if I was running like a Mac, like Poison Burn, whatever he's doing build. Any of that sort of stuff would be really, really annoying. Uh, just because this sort of base level of shielding and actually... Builds that deal their shielding as damage aren't necessarily super weak to the likes of Jules and uh, and Mac if he's doing poison, because you're building so much shield up and up and up to deal back as damage. So I like that it has that lethality to it as well. Uh, scalability is going to be a problem for this, but it's not because we have the pivot ability of this build. That being said, where do I want to put this? Its its core feature is that that strength it has right off the, right out of the gate. It has what twenty eight shield within five seconds. It cannot really push that hard into the sandstorm. It does have marbles, which helps, 
It doesn't scale super infinitely. It just scales pretty well. But again, we have the pivoting option. Obviously, we don't know what items you're bringing in. And again, this is very, very safe against fighting NPCs. So you're going to be able to pick up a lot of gold, do a lot of re-rolling. You've got a lot of options here. I don't know if it's quite perfection. It's close. I am debating. So this build to me fits anywhere on the spectrum from three to five. I think because of its scalability. Ah, oh, but it's got the pivotability. Oh, it's going to be so hard to rank any of these badly. And it does make use of Gavel. I do love Gavel. But Gavel doesn't do what it used to do. So let's go with a solid Babop rating of... Oh, I'm going to give it a four. That's a bit of a cop out. But unfortunately, I I can't quite push it all the way up because it does have that issue with scaling. You could stick to this build. But it's not quite a three because it, it has the pivotability. It's really, really easy options to swap different components out and still be good. So for that, I'm just I'm gonna, it's going to be a four. It's a solid build. And anyone running this is going to have a lot of fun watching anyone remotely try and overcome their base level of strength.